Today we're gonna get pretty close to some Chuck Norris level overclocking. It's not quite Chuck Norris overclocking, but there's a soldering iron involved, so it's, it's close enough for me. Now last week, I had a look at the most majestic graphics card I think I've ever seen. It's the Asus GTX 780 Ti Matrix Platinum, which is a crazy graphics card designed to be the ultimate overclocking card. The problem was, when I tried to overclock it in that video, it didn't go very well. So today, we're gonna strap some stuff to things, we're gonna flash new BIOSes, and then soldering's gonna happen to see what the maximum overclock is we can get. It, again, didn't go very well, but <laughs> we'll get into that a bit later. <laughs> Speaking of older graphics cards, if you want to see a comparison between the 960, 1060 and 1660, I check out the Omnia Tech video that I've linked below. The results are actually pretty interesting. Bear in mind the video is in Portuguese, but there are subtitles for it. Now before we get into the various stages of overclocking, we need to re-establish a baseline, because I'm going to have to do this in like an open air test bed situation, so I'm going to use a different CPU than I used for the benchmarks in the previous video. So for this one, I'm going to use a 1700X overclocked to 3.9 gigahertz and 16 gigs of RAM at 3000 megahertz. Now when it comes to the stock BIOS that comes on the card, you don't really have any voltage control. The max voltage that you can get into the card is is 1.2 volts on the GPU core. Now when that's the voltage that you're running, you can get about 1150 megahertz on the core, which is up from the stock core frequency of 1071 megahertz. I also overclocked the memory from 3500 megahertz to 3850 megahertz, which is where it's gonna be sitting for the remainder of the tests. And then when you play Battlefield 5, you get this result, which, you know, it's, it's, it's a several year old graphics card, so it's not amazing compared to modern cards, but it's a good baseline for us to get started. The next step in our overclocking journey is to flash a new BIOS onto the card so that we can push a little bit more voltage to the core and then hopefully not set fire to my beautiful new set. This is supposedly a fairly easy process. You just use NV flash, you find a modified version of the BIOS, and then you do NV flash things to get the BIOS onto the card. The problem was though, the newest version of NV Flash doesn't play nicely with this several year old graphics card. So I actually had to use an old version of NV Flash, which then worked perfectly fine. After flashing the new BIOS onto the card, I can get a whopping 1.212 volts to the GPU as opposed to 1.2. It's not a massive jump, but it's a little bit better. Now with the air cooler, when I actually overclock it with the new voltage, I can get 1171 megahertz as opposed to 1150. Again, this seems to be a very incremental process, but we get a little bit better performance with Battlefield 5 with this extra clock speed. At this point, we're definitely running into some thermal limitations here. I don't want to do anything to the card that we can get more voltage into the chip just to have it spontaneously combust because of the cooler not being able to handle it. So we're gonna have to get rid of that air cooler and do something a little bit more effective. Unfortunately, I don't have an LN2 pot and some liquid nitrogen lying around, so that's unfortunately not gonna happen in today's video. But I do have an AIO that I can strap to this beast, and then maybe we can do some things to the AIO to make it go even colder. Now this is a little bit of a precarious process. Um, you, you kind of have to lead them through places and then pull tight and use multiple zip ties attached to each other to attach the cooler to the card. But basically, it's, it's kind of worked. Here we go, we've got a cooler very professionally attached to the Matrix Platinum. 
Now the problem with this configuration is that if I have the card standing in its normal orientation, gravity is going to be a bit of a problem because it's going to remove contact between the cold plate and the GPU. So I've actually had to take the card out of the normal slot, use a PCI Express extender dongle thing so that I can lie the card flat down so that gravity goes from being an enemy to being a pretty good friend in this situation. Uh, when under load, we're hitting about 50 C, which is down about 12 degrees from the 62 C that we were getting with the air cooler. It's not a massive difference, but hopefully it'll give us a bit more overclocking headroom. Now, without doing any more voltage modification, the overclock that we can get with the AIO at this lower temperature is a whole 1261 megahertz, which is a pretty big jump over the 1171 megahertz of, of the stock configuration. When it comes to gaming performance, we get an extra one average frame per second. Um, yeah, so that we're not getting a lot more performance, but we're getting a higher core clock. We're getting closer to having exciting overclocking happen. Now that we have better cooling, we need more power. Luckily, this Asus Matrix Platinum does have an LN2 overclocking mode, which does unlock voltage control on the card. The problem is, it's not that straightforward to unlock. There is a little dip switch that makes you switch from standard mode to LN2 mode, but unfortunately that doesn't do anything without modification because they don't want anybody to just flip the switch, push 1.6 volts to their card and then take down the power grid in your local area. So you do actually need to do some soldering to the card. On the front, there are two little pads which you need to short in order to activate the LN2 mode. Now, it's not even as simple as that. There's also a tiny little resistor that you need to remove to stop the card from sending like 1.8 volts to the memory and just killing the graphics card. Now, I do want to reiterate, this resistor is minuscule, and it's just sandwiched in between a bunch of other minuscule resistors. So just desoldering and removing that is, is pretty terrifying. But I'm a badass, so we are going to do that today. So I used a tiny bit of wire to, to bridge the gap, and then, yeah, the soldering worked okay. It looks a little bit like I hurt the PCB a bit, but I, I think it's going to be okay. And then, when it came to removing the resistor, this was pretty terrifying and well I, I ended up getting it off but I'm, I'm I'm not quite sure how well that went so let's see if the graphics card still works so now we should have unlocked voltage control on our Asus matrix platinum the problem is it didn't really work that way so if you use GPU tweak it makes you think that you can go up all the way to 1.8 volts but if you apply anything higher than 1.212 volts it just doesn't do anything, it, it doesn't take. Now I tried multiple different BIOSes and I tried all kinds of stuff and I just couldn't get it working. And then I did some more research and it seems there's another step to it. You also need to do a VGA hotwire mod, which basically uses these uh, voltage control points on the front of the card to solder to either a compatible uh, Republic of Gamers motherboard or like an overclocking terminal thing so that you can have actual hardware control of the voltages on the card on like a separate PCB. And I don't have any of those. And through the entire process of researching how to actually unlock voltage control on the card, people just kind of tangentially mentioned the VGA hotwire thing. And there's very little direct information on how to do any of this stuff. Uh, I did still want to ice cool the AIO to get lower temperatures and see how much that helped. But I have unfortunately run out of time. So let me know in the comment section below if you know how to get complete control of the voltage on this card without having to actually do a VGA hotwire mod. Um, or let me know if you know where I can get one of those PCBs that should supposedly come with this card for complete voltage control because I do still want to take this card to the limit. Uh, I soldered it, you know, like I want to, I want to, I want to reap the benefits of that. Now I've just got a slightly molested Asus GTX 780 Ti Matrix Platinum. I think my first real attempt at Chuck Norris overclocking should definitely be with the GT 710. I'm kind of thinking I should get my hands on one of those EVGA e-power boards and then just bukake that card with power just to see what happens. 
So to sum up everything that's happened in this very successful video, I've managed to take my max overclock from 1150 megahertz all the way up to 1261 megahertz, which gave us about two FPS more performance. So yeah, don't say that this wasn't a waste of time. So with that, thank you very much for watching another video of me failing to do something that I'm clearly too incompetent to do. So if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. Check out the stream later today. And until the next video, bye-bye.